Right, today we'll be looking at the genuine John Deere DZ101880 engine oil filter. So this is quite a large oil filter. It's used on a few of the older John Deere tractors, mainly of the bigger type, big uh, something like a 7810 or that, and that sort of thing. They use these sort of filters quite big. This box is a little bit old, but the filter's alright. It's got John Deere oil filter website. This one's a bit dirty. Made for John Deere in Mexico. Not quite sure who makes this one, but it's John Deere one. I can up and have a look. This one's already been cut up, but it's fine. Your So it comes with a sealing, we'll get to that in a minute. So it comes in a sealed plastic bag, this is all sealed when you get it. Uh, it's nice. Oh, Got on the filter itself, forgot the part number across the top. John Deere in big letters, it's actually got two part numbers on it. That's the one that it's saying it's meant to be. All the instructions on the back. Clean the filter housing, lube the gasket. Do it up till it touches, and then three quarters more. Specifications on there. Made in Mexico, and obviously we've got the A, B, C, D tightening mark, so you can tell how much more you need to do it up. So, on the top got some quite large holes here we'll get a diamond on there for you this is this is quite a large filter those holes there 12 and a half mil big the actual inlet hole itself a bit over 35 so that's quite big it's pretty chunky though nice can see the thickness of it in there. It's pretty thick. How many threads have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's great. There's a considerable amount of thread in there. So it's a real nice base plate. And this is the ceiling ring. It's just a flat rubber O-ring. And on this particular one, it actually sits on top. So it doesn't sit inside like that. It's too big, it sits on top of the filter and seals against the housing that way. So that's nice, it's got a bit of weight in it too, so have a look at that. Just a base plate. It's 350 grams, which is more than some whole oh, oil filters weigh. And the whole filter itself is coming up about a thousand. So it almost weighs one whole kilo, the filter does. And on the inside, what do we got? 
So glue around the top. So this has already been pulled apart, but when this was taken apart, this base plate is actually glued directly onto the cartridge. So when this was cut open around the edge, this come out as one unit and had to be broken off from there. So there's not actually any rubber sealing rings or any of that. It's actually just filter glue around the inside that creates that seal and also holds it on there. Glue itself. It's actually uneven. Like There's a lot on this side. I don't know if I can see that. On well, that side, the edge is about here, but it's spilled over. And on this side, the glue it's actually not even on that edge. So I'm not sure if this was off center or anything when it was actually glued on. It's a little bit hard to tell. Doesn't really want to sit any place in particular. So I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. The it's nice how it's fully attached, but this evidence here shows that it might not actually be the best, depending on the manufacturing process of how it actually goes, because that, that's obviously going to leak around there, so that oil would bypass that part there. Uh, we've got coil spring in the bottom. It's quite a nice spring that. It's got a fair bit of it's quite hard, which you would want it to be, because you don't really want that filter sits in there nicely too. You wouldn't you really wouldn't want that filter moving because it doesn't have any give if that if that pulls back under pressure or under a bounce and that pulls away from that then it's not going to seal it anymore because it doesn't have any rubber but so that nice strong spring is definitely something that you want to see and to show you how much height that's got in it compared to where the element let's see that in there It's going to push down a fair bit on it when it's all together. Can itself, pretty nice and solid. It want to be for the size of it. What have we got? It's about 1.1, 1.2. It's quite a thick can, but it's a big, so you'd want it to, like, in terms of, show you guys how big it actually is. We're we looking at okay, it's almost 13 centimeters wide. Right, and the element that's just my cut marks from the grinder there. The end caps are nice, they got enough metal coming down that they're not too, not too much, but enough to keep it solid. No bypass in the bottom, which means this filter wouldn't be able to bypass any pressure at all because there's no bypass valve in the end. And being glued to the base plate, there's not going to be any give. If that filter is under strain, it can't push down on the spring and come away from there for it to bypass safe. There must be, a, on the tractors that this is used with, there must be a bypass valve on the unit itself. But apart from that, it's just standard cellulose. I'll cut that out and see how much there is and we'll come back. Right, so I've got the media cut out. There's a considerable amount of it. We're coming at 4.2 metres long. 
and I total width of about 11.9 centimeters, so it's a considerable amount of media in there, which is nice. It's like standard cellulose. I've got some on the microscope here, I can show you. In terms of the canister, it's got a nice thing there. Plenty of glue, but not leaked out anywhere. Very strong center tube. Nice. Vortex holes. That's pretty good. So overall, it's not bad filter. There's solid can, a solid base plate, lice holes. There's a lot of media in there. Probably the most out of any filter I've seen yet. Very nice strong spring. The only thing that worries me a little bit is this method of sealing here. Whether that's really a good idea or not. Not 100% sure, but if I had a choice between this and a one with a rubber o-ring, probably be going with the rubber one. Because that's not going to seal around that edge there at all. But overall it's pretty good, not bad.